Alright, so hey everyone, uh, today I want to take a look at Super Cloud Belt and its dead zones. So to start, uh, the camera is about a 32% uh, rounded square. Uh, 10% of this is an axial dead zone, uh, which is what restricts uh, diagonal movement around uh, the axes. So, uh, any movements within these blue ranges will only output uh, one of four directions. Uh, so, in this case, I'm moving perfectly horizontally, and you don't start seeing a diagonal movement until break in, uh, into these green regions, which is beyond both axis dead zones. Uh, this is most obvious when capping the view like this and looking for this movement. Uh, movement has uh, the same shape of dead zone, but just larger, so about 45%. Uh, uh, this has uh, sort of a pullback threshold, so uh, you have to move about 45% to start moving, but you have to pull back under this uh, smaller range to stop. And uh, this is mostly the same shape, except uh, Horizontally, there's these uh, square nubs sticking out of it. Um, when moving beyond the dead zone, you can see that you start at a brisk walk. But if you pull back, uh, when you pull back, you start moving slower uh, before stopping. Uh, this is very similar to the game uh, Hover. And uh, my criticisms are the same here, where I think that uh, that's not very intuitive. Uh, because if you want to move very slowly, you have to move the stick further and then pull back to be able to access that, whereas I think this whole um, sort of pullback threshold can be, would be better removed, and instead of just have it so that once you break through this dead zone, uh, you start at your slowest movement speed, uh, building up to your uh, maximum speed, that would give you more uh, direct granular control over that. Uh, but the restricted uh, diagonals are the same, so uh, it's a little difficult to tell horizontally, but uh, you can see more uh, just right around the dead zone um, with the animation change. And uh, forward and back movement are uh, more uh, restricted uh, compared to uh, the camera. The camera and the uh, uh, vertical restriction for the movement. Uh, and you can see that it widens a bit uh, near the dead zone. And this actually extends into uh, this kind of pullback range, where you can see that I'm pointing at a very uh, a more horizontally biased angle, but I'm moving perfectly forward. But I can move into this diagonal section within this range, and I see a pretty clear transition. Uh, Moving uh, or having more restriction for forward and back uh, can be understandable because there are some uh, narrow slides or something that you may um, it may help to uh, stay on if you have uh, more guaranteed uh, forward and back movement. But it would have been nice to have an option uh, to control that uh, so that you could potentially get uh, full diagonal movement. The option or the stick options in this game are actually excellent. Um, uh, starting here, you see uh, there's aim acceleration. Uh, this is the same as smoothing in some other games. So um, I think the default's like 88%. But uh, to demonstrate this, uh, you, this causes your turn rate to build up over time. So if you, um, if I change directions like this, you can see that there's a bit of a lag between uh, switching directions because it's building up um, to the maximum speed. And if I make quick adjustments, um, very little uh, cursor movement occurs. But you can see if I move it back to 0%, which was before, um, the turn rate starts immediately at whatever you select. So there are dead zone options uh, for both sticks, and it says that they're both 25%, and that's not what I showed. Um, for the camera, this does make sense for the circular portion of the dead zone, 
um, because 10% is from the axial region um, and 25% of that remaining 90% uh, of dead zone will add up to about 32%. So that does make sense. Um, however, as we'll see, um, both uh, dead zones actually control the movement stick and not um, and neither affect the uh, camera. So you can see that the camera is identical to what it was before and the same uh, restricted diagonal movement. But uh, the movement dead zone has uh, grown massive. Uh, it's not 100%. Uh, the pullback threshold uh, still exists, but it's too small to really demonstrate in this video. But you can see that the uh, restricted uh, range has uh, widened a bit at this size. And to demonstrate the minimum, Uh, you can see that the dead zone has uh, shrunk to uh, 30%. And the pullback threshold is no longer uh, sort of a round square shape. It's now um, a perfect rectangle um, with about a height of, of uh, 10% and a width of about 16-17%. And to demonstrate that Um, both options control the movement stick. I'll raise just the right dead zone um, up. And you can see that that's the same as it was uh, with both of them. And the right camera is still the same as it was. So that's uh, you know extremely unfortunate that the dead zones are options are here they just don't work properly. Um, however, um, this game does offer curve options uh, which work fine, and uh, by default uh, the default is 1.3. Uh, the sliders are really touchy, so I can't get that exactly. Um, but uh, that follows a power function um, exactly. So um, 1.3 starts a little slower and then uh, builds up to the maximum turn rate. The maximum for this option is uh, 3.0, which is a cubic curve. So this starts uh, very slow and then also builds up to uh, the maximum speed. What's really interesting about this option is um, one is a linear curve um, and values under one, uh, zero to one, are uh, root curves and the lowest is 0.3 and um, these root curves start much faster. So as you can see right beyond the dead zone it starts very uh, fast and builds up very quickly but then uh, tapers off uh, near the end. End. So these are probably functionally unplayable for most players, um, anything below a linear curve. Um, so it's interesting that they've added them at all. Uh, one thing that I've noticed um, when testing these curves is that um, the maximum turn rate and maximum sensitivity is uh, different uh, for these tests. So at uh, this 0 0.3 value, I got about uh, 600 degrees per second. Um, whereas with a cubic curve, it was about 650, and the default was in between the two. So I don't know if that's errors with uh, my testing, uh, or if this option has uh, some direct influence on 
uh, the sensitivity or maybe there's just some frame rate hiccup uh, during the test. It could be a few things, but uh, they, they were significantly different. Uh, and you can kind of see here the uh, sort of touchiness of uh, the slider. So that's a really a little overly sensitive. So um, we do have excellent options, but uh, just really unfortunately, the dead zone options don't work as intended. If they did, um, then we would at least be able to play with a minimum of a 10% axial dead zone, uh, but they don't. And so uh, we're left with, uh, for the camera, a 32% uh, dead zone uh, regardless. And um, larger dead zones can make accurate adjustments uh, more difficult and the controls feel less responsive in general. And uh, while there's some very generous um, auto aim for the basic uh, blaster, um, you know, uh, shooting, there's none for, uh, or at least very limited for the grenades. And this can make uh, making those accurate adjustments difficult, especially when you're uh, trying to move up quickly. Even, you know, things like accurately um, putting grenades where you want for, you know, pathfinder challenges can be uh, a little difficult because of that. Um, now, this game has been uh, delisted from every platform, um, but it is intended to come back to uh, PC after uh, some updates. Um, so, I'm showing the Xbox One version but uh, there is uh, full controller support there as well. And if these issues apply there, maybe they have a chance to improve this. And maybe if consoles are super lucky, um, they'll be able to get a relisting or an update uh, to address these things. Uh, so uh, some of the improvements would be uh, first getting rid of the axial dead zones around, um, uh, getting rid of these axial dead zones, at least around the camera. Um, so that, uh, and making these dead zone options work so that if you set a, you know, 5% dead zone, 10% dead zone, whatever you want, uh, it is uh, directly that uh, dead zone that you're going to be using. Uh, additionally, uh, having, uh, removing this pullback threshold so that uh, once you just move, exit the dead zone, uh, you start at your slowest movement speed. Uh, lastly, maybe having an uh, option to uh, control the amount of uh, restricted diagonal movement for uh, your forward and back movements. Uh, I'm not going to harp too much on this, it uh, doesn't matter as much, um, though that would be uh, nice to have. Uh, but otherwise, uh, that covers things. Uh, it's just, you know, unfortunate that this game does have excellent options. Um, it has, you know, full button customization, um, really all the uh, controller options you want, dead zone, uh, curve options, uh, you're able to remove smoothing and uh, have control over the horizontal and vertical uh, sensitivity. Um, it's just uh, the dead zone options don't work properly. But uh, that just uh, that covers everything, so uh, thanks for watching, and everyone have a good rest of your day.